Damn, this this makes me very yellow. All right, everyone, we are back with bright side riddles and puzzles. I also got a code for this, so let's check it out. Mr. Morrison was the owner of a small company. Only four people worked there. One day, he came to the office and didn't find his favorite slippers. He always put them on while working. The man searched everywhere and finally spotted them on the roof of the building. Mr. Morrison was furious. He entered the office and started to question his employees. Daniel said, I don't even know where you keep your slippers. Andrew said, I'm terrified of heights. I have never climbed up there. Sandra said, I'm wearing high heels today. I can hardly walk in them. Emily said, I respect you too much to do it to you. One of the employees is lying. Who is it? How am I supposed to know? It's Andrew. He said he was afraid of heights. But on his table, there's a photo in which he's skydiving with a parachute. Uh-oh. Melissa's boyfriend proposed to her and presented a beautiful diamond ring. The girl was afraid of losing it. That's why she kept it in a box on her vanity table. Once, after a long and difficult working day, the girl came home and went straight to bed. When she woke up, the ring was gone. Melissa called the police. They asked three suspects, Melissa's roommate, her best friend, and her neighbor, what they had been doing the night before. Helen, Melissa's roommate for the last three years, said Melissa had indeed looked very tired. She took the tea Helen made for her and went to her room at 10 p.m. Helen went to bed shortly after. Eric, Melissa's best friend, said he had come to visit Melissa at about 11.30 p.m. The girl was already sleeping, but he saw a jewelry box lying open on the table. It was empty. Eric was surprised and left immediately after that. Brenda, the neighbor, said she wanted to borrow a book from Melissa, but when she called her, the girl didn't answer. So Brenda decided not to bother her so late at night. The police soon realized one of these people was lying. Who was it? It was Eric. He was only asked what he had been doing the evening before, but he mentioned the jewelry box. He must have known the ring was missing because he took it. A group of friends went camping. They found a beautiful place in the forest near the river. They were planning to spend a week there. But on the third day, Chris disappeared. The rest of the group gathered near a campfire to figure out where he could be. Paul said, we didn't have enough firewood. I went deeper into the forest to get some. When I came back, Chris was already gone. Ashley said, I was near the river washing my t-shirt. I stained it with ketchup during lunch. Nancy said, I felt unwell, so I decided to take a nap. I was sleeping when an owl woke me up. One of the young people is lying. Do you know who it is? It's Nancy. Owls sleep during the day. It means an owl couldn't have woken a girl. Someone started a gas leak in Mark's apartment. Luckily, the man noticed it. He called the police. After searching the place, they found a watch. Mark claimed it wasn't his. The detective decided to set up an ambush. The watch looked expensive. Surely the criminal would return to get it back. At around midnight, they heard the key turn in the door lock. In a while, a man came in. He was holding a lit candle in his hands. At first, the detective wanted to arrest the man. But after a while, he realized it wasn't the person they had been waiting for. How did he figure it out? Whatever the man was doing in Mark's apartment, he wasn't the one responsible for the gas leak. That criminal wouldn't have entered the apartment holding a burning candle. They would be sure the place was still full of gas. The police found out one particular gang was going to rob a bank. An undercover agent was sent to the restaurant where the criminals always gathered in the evening. 
His task was to attach a tiny GPS tracker to one of the gang members. Then the police would know about their location and would be able to prevent the robbery. The leader of the gang was the mastermind of the group. All other members were just muscle. The undercover officer had to be very attentive around the leader. The man could easily spot the device, but no other gang member would notice it. Where should the agent place the tracker? On the gang leader's backpack. He's the only person who can spot the device, but not if it's on his own back. Police got a call from the house of a wealthy man. He didn't come home after going for a jog. When several police officers arrived, they questioned all the people in the house. They were the maid, the millionaire's wife, and his driver. The maid said, When Mr. Can we not turn on subtitles or something? Mr. Jones went for a jog. He asked me to prepare his breakfast. I immediately got down to work. But it's been three hours, and he hasn't returned yet. The wife was worried, too. I saw him in the morning, but he was in a hurry. We just greeted each other, and I went to work. The driver told the police he had been waiting for his boss in the car, scrolling through his social media. Who knows something about the millionaire's disappearance? Uh. <laughs> the maid is lying. If she had cut the apples for breakfast three hours ago, they would have already turned brown by now. Oh, come on. Shirley got a new job as a sales assistant. She was extremely happy to receive her first salary. She went out for a walk in the park and decided to treat herself to some ice cream. She pulled out cash, but a powerful gust of wind has blown the money out of her hands. The girl managed to pick it up, but then she realized one $10 bill was missing. Shirley looked around. One of these people must have taken the bill. Can you figure out who it was? It's the man in the red baseball cap. The bill is under his right foot. Detective Larson was walking along the street. Suddenly, he saw a man grab an elderly woman's bag and run away. The detective immediately rushed after the criminal, but the man disappeared behind the kitchen door of a small restaurant. When Detective Larson entered, he saw three cooks preparing food. Which cook is fake? It's the man holding the salad bowl. He's the only one not wearing gloves. People began to disappear in a large town. One month after it started, the police came across an abandoned house. In its basement, they found two men. Each of them claimed that he had been locked up there and that the other man was the one to keep him in the basement. But it was clear that only one of them was telling the truth. Look at these men attentively and say who's the liar. It's the man who's smiling. If he had spent four weeks locked up, he would have a beard and mustache by now. But he's clean shaven. Rachel Brown, the owner of a large and successful company, has disappeared right from her office. The police suspect that some of her subordinates might know where the woman is. They question three people. Ruth, the HR manager, is the first to enter. We were going to fire an employee that day. I came to get Miss Brown's signature. Adam, the accountant, says, I indeed came to her office. She had to approve the company's budget for the next year. And the secretary comes in last. I saw Ms. Brown today, but only for a minute or so. I asked her to sign my leave request. The police officers immediately realize who is lying. Can you figure it out too? The signature is different. Anne is lying. The signature on her documents is different from the others. Plus, she is the person Ruth was going to fire that day. Martin bought a car in September, and now, just a month later, it's stolen. The police have four suspects, and all of them are Martin's friends. The crime happened at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. At that time, Alan was playing badminton in the park. Natalie was driving home from work. Roy was walking with his dog, and Rose was doing some grocery shopping. Who took Martin's car? Well, it's us, guy.
It was Alan. Mm -hmm. At 10 p.m. in October, it's too dark to play badminton. What? Which family is poor? What a game! <laughs> That's appropriate. There's a lot of mini games. Or a lot of game modes. So you're on a desert island and you're starving. You find a bush filled with berries. You eat a few, but start to feel sick. A local Hey, I thought this was uninhabited. They tell you that eating watermelons and grapes will get rid of the poison, but apples and carrots will make things worse. In front of you, there are tomatoes, cabbages, oranges. Which one do you eat? Tomatoes! Like watermelons and grapes, they also grow on vines, unlike the rest. You're lost in the desert with just one bottle of water, but you don't know where the nearest water source is. What do you do? Cover yourself with your backpack to avoid sweating? Walk as quickly as you can to find water? Find shade and rest? The best option is the last one. When it gets dark, you can walk further and find help. While sightseeing in a town, a volcano erupts nearby. There's no lava coming out, just thick black smoke. You see three potential routes to safety. Which one do you take? A tall lighthouse is a few feet away, a basement, a car in front of you. <laughs> well, the car, if the car is in front of me. Go to the basement and close the door behind you. Lava smoke travels fast, and it can reach the tallest point of the lighthouse. It's 3 p.m., and while walking in the middle of a desert, you come across a tall tower with a crazy scientist living there. He tells you that if you want to make it out alive, you must calculate the height of his tower. What do you use? Fallen tree branches, your shadow, your watch. Your shadow, since you know how tall you are. I thought that's what I picked. How many times your shadow fits into the tower shadow? Okay, my bad. At a water park, and you've been taken captive by a supervillain. He takes you to the highest point of the park and shows you three slides: an orange one, a green one, and a yellow one. One leads to a pool filled with acid, one to a tropical paradise, and the other to a volcano filled with lava. 
the supervillain tells you, in a parallel world, the purple slide leads to freedom. Which one do you choose? Ah, uh, no idea. The yellow slide. Yellow is the opposite of purple. You're on a trip into the wild. A huge angry elephant has spotted you, and it's running towards you. What do you do? Run down a steep slope leading to a river. Climb up a tall tree right next to you. Run straight towards some other animals, hoping it'll lose sight of you. Run down the steep slope. Elephants avoid areas with high elevation to stop themselves being injured. During a camping trip, you realize you have no water, but you're very thirsty. There are three ways to get water. Which one is the least dangerous? Harvest some from a cactus. Drink the water from a stagnant lake. Take some water from a flowing river. Cactus water isn't the safest, and a stagnant lake is filled with bacteria and parasites. The least dangerous option is the flowing river. You've been stuck in the wild for days, and you have no idea which way leads to civilization. Which side do you follow? A plane passing overhead? A flowing river? A group of animals? Your best bet is the river. Since the beginning of time, people have built villages along riverbanks. A mysterious biologist invites you to his home for dinner. He takes you down to the basement and puts three plates of weird items on the table. One has wild white mushrooms with white gills. The second is filled with castor beans. The third has some fish brains. Which one is safe to eat? The plate of fish brains is the only dish that isn't poisonous. But the dinner isn't over yet. You're taken into a room with three large tanks filled with salt water. You must stay in one of them for five minutes. The biologist promises to set you free if you make it out alive. The first contains six great white sharks. The second has 70 piranhas. The last one is filled with dangerous box jellyfish. Which could you survive in? In the second tank, piranhas are freshwater fish. They can't survive in salt water. You're leading an expedition to the North Pole. As you're sailing there, a huge chunk of ice falls into the water, causing a large wave to come your way. What do you tell your crew to do? Stop the ship and stay until the wave passes? Start moving in the opposite direction. Keep going and lean into the wave as it hits. Leaning into the wave is the only way to get some balance. Anything else will cause your ship to capsize. You're stuck in a room that's slowly filling up with water. Help is six minutes away. The water will reach the ceiling in just two minutes. But on the floor, there's a tree branch, a straw, a bucket. Which one will buy you some time? The bucket. Flip it over your head, and it'll create an air bubble that will allow you to breathe for a while. While out camping, you come across an angry brown bear that's coming closer and closer to you. What should you do? Start running as fast as you can. Fall to the ground and pretend you're unconscious. Stay still and don't move. Fall to the ground. That way, the bear won't see you as a threat. Oliver is trapped in the freezing north. David is lost in the desert without any clothes. Who will collapse first?
David. The cold weather makes Oliver shiver. His muscles tighten and loosen very fast to keep him warm. But David quickly becomes dehydrated in the sun. While walking through a dense jungle, you get bitten on the leg by a venomous snake. How can you survive? By drawing the venom out with your mouth, washing the wound with water and a cloth, by tying your leg with a piece of your shirt. Tying your leg will prevent the venom from reaching the rest of your body. As you're driving down the road, you come across a fallen tree blocking your way. You get out of the car and try to move it, but then you see a huge tornado coming towards you. Boy, it's not your day. How will you survive? Get back in your car and drive fast in the opposite direction. Climb up the sturdiest tree, find a ditch on the ground and stay there until the tornado passes. The last one. If the tornado passes over you, it won't sweep you up. You walk into a room, and right when you close the door, it catches fire. There's no way out, but firefighters are on their way. How will you buy yourself some time until help arrives? By lying flat on the floor, by climbing onto a chair to avoid the flames, by standing in the corner of the room. It's the first option. Smoke travels upwards toward the ceiling, so lying flat on the floor will help you to breathe. You're trapped in a maze inside an abandoned castle. You can pick only one door to stay alive. The first one leads to a room filled with sharp blades and knives. The second has dozens of venomous snakes and spiders. Behind the third door, there's an electrified moat. Which one do you pick? The last door. Since this is an abandoned castle, you can flip the light switch to check if it has electricity and then go through there. A creepy professor has taken you to his secret island. He wants to see how smart you are. He presents you with, guess what, three doors, but only one is safe. The first one leads to five of the most dangerous people on Earth. The second leads to a room with a powerful laser and mirrors on the wall. The third leads to a lab filled with radioactive waste. Which is the least dangerous option? The first door. It'll be easier to deceive the people there into letting you walk free. Easy. You're lost in an ancient cave system, and you come across three tunnels. You must swim through them to the exit. The first is filled with lava. The second has stagnant water containing bacteria and parasites. The third contains cornstarch mixed with water. Which one is the least dangerous to go through? Is cornstarch bad? Stagnant water is your best option. Lava will burn you, and cornstarch water will swallow you in just a few minutes. Good luck! I didn't know that. Charlotte and Elizabeth this is a weird game. Homework. Charlotte is going to iron some clothes, and Elizabeth is about to cook. Who's not being smart? Both? Elizabeth. Charlotte's safe because the iron is turned off. Yeah, but what is she doing? are going on a field trip with their kids. Lucas is distracted while his daughter is climbing a tree. Liam is talking to another parent while his son is petting a dog. Who is wrong? Lucas. The branch his daughter is climbing is cracking, and she is about to fall. Ava and Olivia are finally leaving home for their first night out after maternity leave. Ava decides to walk, and Olivia is waiting for a taxi. 
Who is not ready? Olivia. She forgot to finish her makeup. Michael and Logan are oh, bloggers who take selfies in dangerous places. This time, Michael is taking a selfie while surfing on a huge wave, and Logan is taking one standing on the edge of a bridge. Who is not smart? Michael. In Logan's case, at least there are people around who can call emergency services if something goes wrong. Michael is alone. It's early morning. Ian Doesn't have to Michael surf alone. Driving their kids to school. Who is not smart? Forgot his kid. Nolan. His child is not in the car. Jackson and Emma are volunteering at an animal shelter. Jackson is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is wrong? <laughs> okay, it's dog first. Jackson. He gave the cats dog food by mistake. Scarlet and Ellie are going to bed. Scarlet kept her door open so her cat could enter during the night, while Ellie prefers to close her door. I Who don't is know. Not smart? Who is not smart? Hey. Scarlet, you should always close your bedroom door at night. In case of fire, it'll stop the flames for a while and give you more time. What? Riley and Isabella are taking their kids to kindergarten. Riley is riding a bike with her daughter, and Isabella and her son are going by car. Who is wrong? <sighs> Isabella. Her child isn't wearing a seatbelt. Lily oh my and Oliver God. have job interviews at 4 o'clock. Lily is ironing her best suit, and Oliver is waiting in the hallway wearing jeans. Who's not getting the job today? Lily. She must have forgotten the time. The interview is in five minutes, and she's still at home. Sophia and Aiden are working in the garden. Sophia is watering the flowers while her cat is walking around. Aiden is mowing the lawn while his child is playing nearby. Who's not smart? No one is smart. Aiden, it's dangerous to use the lawnmower when children are close by. John and Brandon are making breakfast for their kids. John is making sandwiches, and Brandon is making eggs with bacon. Who is wrong? His stove is off. So he's dumb. Brandon, he forgot to turn on the stove. Thomas and Abigail are going on a date. Thomas arrived a half an hour early and decided to buy some flowers. Abigail just returned from London and is driving to meet him. Who is wrong? It's such a weird game. Abigail. She's driving on the left side of the road. What? Ryan and Kaylee are having fun outside. I don't know where she's from. Break. Ryan is learning how to skate on the lake, and Kaylee is skiing in the forest. Who is not smart? Ryan. The ice on the lake is cracking, and there's no one around to help him. Yeah. Asher and Haley are enjoying their vacations. Asher is chilling at the beach, and Haley is climbing the highest mountain around. Who is not behaving wisely? It's her because it, there's a, a higher mountain on the other side. Asher. Although Haley's activity is quite risky, she seems to be okay. But Asher fell asleep at the beach and is going to get a sunburn. Oh my Chloe god. And Avery are having some quality time on Friday. Chloe is reading a book and Avery is watching a documentary. Who is missing something? Avery. She forgot to turn off the oven and something's burning. Hannah and Maya are meeting their friends today. 
Hannah arrived by bike and is waiting for her friend by the house. Mia arrived by car, opened the doors, and is waiting for her friend to come down. Who is not smart? Maya. It's not safe to stay in the car with unlocked doors. A stranger can quickly get in the car and she wouldn't be able to do anything from the front seat. What? Mason and Jacob are going on a trip to the desert where they'll spend the whole Some of these are so far-fetched. It's not it's like you'd have to be paranoid to get to to understand what the intention is. There. Who is not adequately prepared? Mason. The sun is powerful, and he's not wearing a hat. Emily and Madison are spending their time outdoors, but it's not their lucky day. Emily stumbled and... Who cares about the backpack? It's the hat that counts. Yeah. No one said he needs to sleep outside. Fell in some mud. Madison was swinging, but fell. Now, they both are getting up. Who made a mistake? Madison. The swing is still moving, and it may hit her head if she gets up. Aubrey and James are cleaning the house. Aubrey is listening to music while vacuuming the living room, and James is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? <laughs> the vacuum is off. Aubrey. The vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. <laughs> Mia and Ethan are going on summer vacation. Mia is going to Greece, and Ethan is visiting his brother in Sydney. Who is not smart? Ethan. He's packed shorts and swimwear, but he won't need them because it's winter in Australia. Carter and Layla are in a hurry for work. Carter is walking while talking on his phone, and Layla is running while texting. Who's going to be late? Layla. She's looking at her phone and doesn't see the pit she's about to walk into. Leah and Eric Perfect. are driving to meet their friends. Leah has all of her things scattered in the car, and Aaron is traveling above the speed limit. Who is not smart? Leah. It's not safe to keep unprotected things inside the car. In case she stops suddenly, something can hit her very hard. William and Daniel are driving and are late for work. Who is wrong? Uh -huh. Daniel, he's driving way above the speed limit in the neighborhood. Jane and Amelia are resting in the park after running five miles. Jane is eating, and Amelia is drinking water from the fountain. Who is not smart? Amelia, the warning sign says that the water isn't drinkable. Max and Ezra were driving around the desert and got stuck in the middle of nowhere. They burned a spare tire to produce some smoke. Max stayed close to the tire, and Ezra walked away in search of something helpful. Who is not smart? It's toxic. Ezra, you should never leave the vehicle. Chances uh. are the rescuers will notice the smoke and find you. But if you go, you might miss them. Both Jonathan and Savannah didn't sleep well and are starting their morning. While Savannah is preparing some coffee, Jonathan is taking out the trash. Who is doing something wrong? Jonathan. Instead of the trash, he's taking out the old toys they collected to donate. <laughs> Stella and Aurora. <laughs> like, how are you supposed to get some of these? Didn't study for the test. 
One of them decided to try her best, and the other is planning to cheat. Can you spot who's cheating? Stella. She has a lot of bags surrounding her, so she must be trying to hide something. Miles and Cooper were walking in a park when a sudden storm erupted. Lightning struck a tree, and Miles decided to hide under it. Cooper entered a little shack nearby. Who is wrong? Miles. The belief that lightning never strikes in the same place twice is just a common misconception. An indoor shelter is one of the best places to hide. Leo and Melanie are preparing a barbecue party. Leo is cooking and Melanie is decorating the yard. Who is not smart? She's decorating with helium balloons. This is go up. While he's cooking, the meat is spoiling in the direct side. Oh, uh, okay, well, whatever. Look, I think which family is poor is probably one of the best inappropriate concept you can have for <laughs> for a game you guys want to see another one Let's be inappropriate, though. So Dave though. had to sneak into his mom's computer to delete some emails he accidentally sent her. His mom had a bad memory, so she always had notes with her passcodes. Luckily, the note was right there again, saying 9868. Dave entered the passcode, but it was wrong. Why? And what's the actual passcode? The note was just turned upside down. The actual passcode is 8986. Stephanie came home after a long day at work. She was very excited to finally eat her favorite chocolate she had been dreaming about all day. I thought but so the too. Chocolate was gone. Stephanie interrogated each of her family members. Her husband said, I just got home from work too and haven't eaten anything all day. Her daughter, Della, said, I was studying all day and didn't eat anything, too. Della's twin brother, Arnie, said, It wasn't me. Who ate the chocolate? Take a closer look at Della's desk. There's a chocolate wrapper. I saw she it. said she didn't eat anything. She must have lied. A grocery store manager noticed that recently they started to lose watermelons. He suggested that there is a watermelon thief coming at the store from time to time. He opened one of the security videos and could immediately tell who the thief was. Look at the picture and try to guess who is the culprit. Look at the guy in the middle. He has a ball in his hands, but he's holding it like it's very heavy. Usually, balls aren't heavy, so it must be a watermelon. I thought it was the pregnant lady. Came to the job audition. The company doesn't want to hire parents because they need full commitment. Both men said that they're not parents, but one of them is lying. Can you tell who? Yeah, I I, I don't know how you got a melon in a in a basketball, but sure, sure game. Like, the lady that was buying the watermelon in her cart had, a, like, a baby bump? That was clearly fake. Who's... Wait, was the question who is a dad or who is not a dad? 
It's Mark. Take a closer look at his hand. There's a pink scrunchie on it. He must have done his daughter's hair before the audition. Mrs. Smith invited her neighbors over for a fancy dinner. She used her best tea set and silver cutlery and cooked a great meal. However, during the dinner, she realized that one of her neighbors is a vampire. Who is the vampire and how did she understand it? The vampire is the one who brought his own plastic spoon and is eating with it instead of with Mrs. Smith's silver cutlery. That's because vampires are afraid of silver. Four friends met after the summer break and talked about how their summer went. Toby was bragging about the months he spent in Chile and how hot it was there. What a However, weird game. His friends didn't believe him and called him a liar. Why? Chile is located in the Southern Hemisphere. During the summertime, it's winter there. Toby said it was hot, which can't be true. Three friends, Blair, Chloe, and Nell, were walking all day around town. They found a beautiful but dusty house where no one lived. They entered it and started to take pictures. In the evening, they were scrolling through the pictures and one of them made a scream. Take a look at the photos and say which one scared them and why. It's the first picture. There was no one in the house except for the girls. But on that picture, they're all three of them together, snapped from behind. Michelle was having a birthday party. She noticed her brother was eating in his room with some girl. However, she didn't know who it was. She got very curious, so after they left, she sneaked into his room to find some hints. There were three girls at her party, Jasmine, Sydney, and Nicole. Michelle immediately guessed who her brother was dating. Can you? The one with lipstick. Her brother was dating Jasmine. Look at the dishes and the cutlery. There's a lipstick stain on the fork. Jasmine is the only one wearing lipstick. Pamela is a lawyer and Samantha is a journalist. Can you guess which one of these women is a mother? Take a look at the background. On the wall behind Samantha, there's some colorful marker scribbles. She must be a mother. Gianna was getting ready for her date. Suddenly, the lights in her apartment went off. She was almost ready and only needed her gloves. It was dark and she couldn't find a fitted pair. She only had gloves of two colors, brown and black. She was already late, so she decided to leave, taking several gloves with her. How many gloves should she take with her to be sure there's a pair of the same color? She just needs three. Ah, Even right. the first two are of a different color, the third one will either be black or brown, matching the other one. That's, that was stupid. A police officer was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the robber entered the hospital and disappeared. When the police officer entered the building, there were three workers. One of them must be a robber who dressed up to pretend to be a doctor. Can you tell who? It's the man in the middle. Look at his badge. There's a picture of a woman on it. He must have worn the first pair of clothes he noticed. It was Christmas morning and the whole family was home. When Bailey returned in her room after watching her show on TV, she found that someone stole all the presents she had been wrapping. She questioned every person in the house. Her mom said that she had been making dinner. Her dad said he had been mowing the lawn. Her brother said he had been playing video games in his room. Who stole the presents?
It was Bailey's dad. It's winter, and we can see that it's snowing outside. He just couldn't mow the lawn. In the Arts Museum, the lights went off for a couple of minutes. When they came back on, the most expensive painting was missing. The detective arrived and started the investigation. There were three suspects, and he questioned each of them. Jessica, a dance teacher, said that she had been so scared when the lights went off that she couldn't even move and for sure didn't touch anything. Derek, a journalist, said he'd been in the bathroom at the time. Collins, an engineer, said he had been in a different room of the museum, watching the dinosaur fossil. Who's lying? I mean, I don't know. It's Collins. It's an art museum. There are no dinosaur exhibitions. Uh. Can you tell who's not a real werewolf? It's actually the guy who looks like a werewolf. Werewolves only turn into wolves during the time of the full moon and at night. It's daytime now, so the guy must be just wearing a costume. Esme was having a walk in the forest. After the dawn, she tried to find her way back home, but got lost. Finally, she came across a witch's house and asked her to take her home. The witch agreed to help her, but only if Esme solved her riddle. If not, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. The witch took an apple, tied a string to it, and held it. She asked Esme to cut the string in half so that the apple didn't fall down. However, Esme couldn't touch the apple or hold it. How could she do it? Esme should tie a knot in the middle of the string, make it into a loop, and then cut the apple. The time police have found out that there's a time traveler who uses the time machine more often than allowed. They tracked him and followed him to the Stone Age. Can you guess who's the time traveler? It's this guy who's wearing sneakers. Sneakers in the Stone Age? Really? Mr. Brown was robbed in the street. The culprit hit him on the right side of his head and ran away with his wallet. Mr. Brown didn't see who it was, but he noticed that the person entered a nearby hospital. When he entered, there were three people sitting there. Take a close look at them and tell who was the culprit. Mr. Brown was hit on the right side of his face. This means that the robber is left-handed. Look at where the bags stand next to those people. The first woman has her purse on the left side of her, which means it must have been her. For her birthday, Sienna got a beautiful hairpin. She brought it to school and showed it to her friends during lunch. Then she left for the bathroom, and when she returned, the hairpin was gone. Take a look at the pictures before and after and tell which of her friends stole it. Look at the glass of juice of the red-haired girl. It looks like there's more juice on the later picture. No, there's not. She just put a hairpin in the glass. Mr. Green got in a car accident and spent a month in the hospital. He got amnesia and partially forgot things. He didn't have any family, and after a month, he finally returned home. He found his street. But then he realized he didn't remember which of the two houses was actually his. Can you guess which one it was? His house is the one where the snow is unshoveled. He spent a month in the hospital and lives alone, so no one could clean the driveway. Look at the Christmas photos of two families. Can you tell which family is poor? The poor family is the second one. 
Even though the son has a big present, the parents don't have any presents at all. They probably couldn't afford to buy presents for themselves. Damn. We are so smart, guys. Multiplayer. I'm Batman. Look, throw. Which family is poor? <laughs> the best. <laughs> best riddle of all time. I have so many questions, I want no answers. Good, because I was about to go. Um... Was I? I kind of want to do this again and see if uh, it's the same. Mr. Morrison was the owner of a small company. Only four people worked there. One day, he came to the office and didn't find his favorite slippers. He always put them on while working. The man searched everywhere and finally spotted them on the roof of the building. Mr. Morrison was furious. He entered the office and started to question his employees. Daniel said, I don't even know where you keep your slippers. Andrew said, I'm terrified of heights. I have never climbed up there. Sandra said, I'm wearing high heels today. I can hardly walk in them. Emily said, I respect you too much to do it to you. One of the employees is lying. Who is it? So, it is the same thing? It's Andrew. He said he was afraid of heights. But on his table, there's a photo in which he's skydiving with a parachute. Uh-oh. Yeah. Melissa's boyfriend proposed to her and presented a beautiful diamond ring. The girl was afraid of losing it. That's why she kept it in a box on her vanity table. Once, after a long and difficult working day, the girl came home and went straight to bed. When she woke up, the ring was gone. Melissa called the police. They asked three suspects, Melissa's roommate, her best friend, and her neighbor, what they had been doing the night before. Helen, Melissa's roommate for the last three years, said Melissa had indeed looked very tired. She took the tea Helen made for her and went to her room at 10 p.m. Helen went to bed shortly after. Eric, Melissa's best friend, said he had come to visit Melissa at about 11.30 p.m. The girl was already sleeping, but he saw a jewelry box lying open on the table. It was empty. Eric was surprised and left immediately after that. Brenda, the neighbor, said she wanted to borrow a book from Melissa, but when she called her, the girl didn't answer. So Brenda decided not to bother her so late at night. The police soon realized one of these people was lying. Who was it? Well, maybe I can get 100% right. It was Eric. He was only asked what he had been doing the evening before, but he mentioned the jewelry box. He must have known the ring was missing because he took it. A group of friends went camping. They found a beautiful place in the forest near the river. They were planning to spend a week there, but on the third day, Chris disappeared. The rest of the group gathered near a campfire to figure out where we could be. Paul said, we didn't have enough firewood. I went deeper into the forest to get some. When I came back, Chris was already gone. Ashley said, I was near the river washing my t-shirt. I stained it with ketchup during lunch. Nancy said, I felt unwell, so I decided to take a nap. I was sleeping when an owl woke me up. One of the young people is lying. Do you know who it is? So she killed him? It's Nancy. Owls sleep during the day. It means an owl couldn't have woken a girl. Someone started a gas leak in Mark's apartment. 
Luckily, the man noticed it. He called the police. After searching the place, they found a watch. Mark claimed it wasn't his. The detective decided to set up an ambush. The watch looked expensive. Surely the criminal would return to get it back. At around midnight, they heard the key turn in the door lock. In a while, a man came in. He was holding a lit candle in his hands. At first, the detective wanted to arrest the man. But after a while, he realized it wasn't the person they had been waiting for. How did he figure it out? Whatever the man was doing in Mark's apartment, he wasn't the one responsible for the gas leak. That criminal wouldn't have entered the apartment holding a burning candle. They would be sure the place was still full of gas. The police found out one particular gang was going to rob a bank. An undercover agent was sent to the restaurant where the criminals always gathered in the evening. His task was to attach a tiny GPS tracker to one of the gang members. Then the police would know about their location and would be able to prevent the robbery. The leader of the gang was the mastermind of the group. All other members were just muscle. The undercover officer had to be very attentive around the leader. The man could easily spot the device, but no other gang member would notice it. Where should the agent place the tracker? On the gang leader's backpack. He's the only person who can spot the device, but not if it's on his own back. Police got a call from the house of a wealthy man. He didn't come home after going for a job. When several police officers arrived, they questioned all the people in the house. They were the maid, the millionaire's wife, and his driver. The maid said, When Mr. Jones went for a jog, he asked me to prepare his breakfast. Uh, this is the most bullshit reason of all of It's been three them. hours, and he hasn't returned yet. The wife was worried, too. I saw him in the morning, but he was in a hurry. We just greeted each other, and I went to work. The driver told the police he had been waiting for his boss in the car, scrolling through his social media. Who knows something about the millionaire's disappearance? The maid is lying. If she had cut the apples for breakfast three hours ago, they would have already turned brown by now. Shirley got a new job as a sales assistant. She was extremely happy to receive her first salary. She went out for a walk in the park and decided to treat herself to some ice cream. She pulled out cash, but a powerful gust of wind has blown the money out of her hands. The girl managed to pick it up, but then she realized one $10 bill was missing. Shirley looked around. One of these people must have taken the bill. Can you figure out who it was? It's the man in the red baseball cap. The bill is under his right foot. Detective Larson was walking along the street. Suddenly, he saw a man grab an elderly woman's bag and run away. The detective immediately rushed after the criminal, but the man disappeared behind the kitchen door of a small restaurant. When Detective Larson entered, he saw three cooks preparing food. Which cook is fake? It's the man holding the salad bowl. He's the only one not wearing gloves. People began to disappear in a large town. One month after it started, the police came across an abandoned house. In its basement, they found two men. Each of them claimed that he had been locked up there and that the other man was the one to keep him in the basement. But it was clear that only one of them was telling the truth. Look at these men attentively and say who's the liar. It's the man who's smiling. If he had spent four weeks locked up, he would have a beard and mustache by now. But he's clean shaven. <coughs> Rachel Brown, the owner of a large and successful company, has disappeared right from her office. The police suspect that some of her subordinates might know where the woman is. They question three people. Ruth, the HR manager, is the first to enter. We were going to fire an employee that day. I came to get Miss Brown's signature. Adam, the accountant, says, I indeed came to her office. She had to approve the company's budget for the next year. And the secretary comes in last. 
I saw Ms. Brown today, but only for a minute or so. I asked her to sign my leave request. The police officers immediately realize who is lying. Can you figure it out too? Anne is lying. The signature on her documents is different from the others. Plus, she is the person Ruth was going to fire that day. Martin bought a car in September, and now, just a month later, it's stolen. The police have four suspects, and all of them are Martin's friends. The crime happened at 10 p.m. on Wednesday. At that time, Alan was playing badminton in the park. Natalie was driving home from work. Roy was walking with his dog, and Rose was doing some grocery shopping. Who took Martin's car? It was Alan. At 10 p.m. in October, it's too dark to play badminton. Perfect! Totally not cheating. Alright. Um, well, that's gonna be it for me. That was certainly unique, but uh, this is probably more fun as a party game with uh, with more people. Anyway, uh, hope you guys got to know a few new games today and enjoyed some of them. Um, I'm out. I'll be back tomorrow with um, with something else. We'll see. Have a good night. Thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. Goodbye.